Now, for a few minutes this morning, I want to speak to the boys and girls and the young people that are here. I had a visitor this week to the manse, and that individual brought a basket of fruit and vegetables. Now, of course, I love fruit and vegetables, and especially love fruit. And, of course, we all have favourites, haven't we? And um, one of my favourites is an apple. And that got me thinking, as I looked at this basket of fruit with tomatoes and uh, apples and oranges and other uh, things there, I was thinking of the word apple. And it reminded me that there's 11 references in the Bible to the word apple. The first reference is in Deuteronomy 32 verse 10. And the last reference is in Zechariah 2 and 8. It's interesting that there's no mention of the word apple in the New Testament. And here's one of those references, boys and girls. Now, are you listening? You'll find it in Psalm 17. And it's in the verse 8. And David said, this was a prayer, Keep me as the apple of thine eye. Think of that. Keep me as the apple of thine eye. Now, I want you to think of this. Three things about the apple very quickly. The commonality of the apple. There's many different varieties of apples. And my favorite, of course, is the pink lady. And they're very expensive. I think they're about 40 pence for each one. They're crunchy, they're juicy, and they're sweet. And of course, when we think of apples and their variety, they come in different sizes, different colors, and they have different uses. Some are for eating, like the pink ladies. Others are for cooking and baking. Think about an apple tart. Think about your apple juice that you get with your breakfast. But do you know that apples have one thing in common? Despite the different size and color and use, they have one thing in common. And I have borrowed this from Rosie's Kitchen. And I'm going to see, hopefully without breaking this plate, yes, okay, I'm going to show you what it is. And you can taste this apple afterwards, because it's very nice. Okay. Does anybody know what that is? Any boy or girl? Yes, Gabby. The core of the apple. You see, every apple, boys and girls, young people, every apple has a core. And the core is a hard, tasteless thing. You don't eat the core. You toss it out. You put it in the bin. You see, all the apples are different on the outside, color, size, and use. But when it comes to the inside, every apple has a core. And that reminds me, of course, of our hearts. Doesn't the Bible say, when we think about our hearts, behold, I was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. And the fact is that we're all born sinners. We're born with a bad heart and a bad record toward God. But the great message of the gospel is our sin can be dealt with. The Bible teaches the blood of Jesus Christ, his son cleanseth us from all sin. The Bible says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And remember what Paul says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So there's the first thing about the apple. The commonality of the apple, the apple has a hard, tasteless core. You don't eat it. And it's like our hearts, born in sin and shaped in iniquity. But that sin can be dealt with by the precious blood of Christ. Have you come and put your faith and trust in Christ? Do you know him? Is he your Lord and Savior? I want you to think about something else about the apple. The care of the apple. If you go down to the vegetable shop and ask the lady to show you a box of apples, she'd bring out this big box and she'll open it up and every individual apple is sitting packed in what we would call a tray of apples. The apples don't touch each other in the box. 
Why? Here's the answer. In case of disease. If you get a bad apple in that box, and that bad apple was touching the other apples, that other apple would be affected, and it would be diseased as well. And, and, and that brought me to think about our company. You've heard of the expression, boys and girls and young people, so-and-so's a rotten apple. And aren't there many ungodly young boys and girls in the world today who, because of their heart of sin, are, are into drink and into drugs and into parties and rock and roll and gambling and many other sins? And of course, if you were to bite into a rotten apple, suppose I had brought a rotten apple out of the basket and there was none in it, by the way. But suppose I had a rotten apple and asked you to bite into it this morning. It would be like rotten flesh and you would, you would spit it out. You say, that apple's rotten, Mr. McLaughlin. How can I eat that there? Well, you think of a person who influences you to sin, who puts prayer pressure onto you. And of course, remember the psalmist said, Psalm 1 verse 1 Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly Nor standeth in the way of sinners Nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful And it's very important that you watch your company Because bad company can have an effect upon you Just like a rotten apple And you can be led into the ways of sin So think about the care of the apple And you think about your company And I would encourage you to choose Christian company and stay away from the pubs and the clubs and the the offer to drink or or the offer of drugs. I want you to think also, and this is not the sermon, by the way, the choice of the apple. Why do we eat fruit? Well, you've heard the little saying, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. The apple's good for you and you can into this apple later on at the end of the service. Why? Because it's full of vitamin C. It's a healthy source of food. Rosie tells me it's better than biscuits. In fact, she says I need to go on a diet and I'm trying to eat as much fruit as I can every day. You know, you're five a day. It's refreshing. It's tasty and juicy. And I think again about those pink lady apples. It does me good. And when I'm biting into that apple, I'm reflecting on the goodness of God. And of course, there's no sweeter and no better than enjoying the blessing and the benefits of God to us. Do you know as someone who's a healthy Christian, and we've read the word health in our Bible reading this morning, a healthy Christian is someone who does you good, someone who's sweet and beneficial and helpful. And here's the psalmist and he's praying to God, God, keep me. But in what way do I want you to keep me? As the apple of your eye. As the little man of your eye. For that's what it means. Keep me in such a way so I'm protected by you. Keep me in such a way that I enjoy your presence. That your eyes continually upon me. Keep me in such a way that I'm provided for. There's the choice of the apple. And that's why he chose that expression. Because he wanted to be under the protection, the provision, the preciousness And the blessing of God. And I leave that little thought with you. Eleven references in the Bible. And here's one of them. Keep me as the apple of thine eye. And you could pray that. Lord help me to remember the apples of all something in common. They've got a heart. Help me to remember the care. So that Lord. I take good care of myself. I take heed to myself. Help me to remember the choice. It's full of goodness. For me. And God is good. I leave that little thought with you, boys and girls. And I trust and pray the Lord will bless you. I set it here in case I tramp on it and knock it down.